There was no way to get to the outside world. And I'd turn around and he'd be there. He would lift his blowtorch and say, I'm gonna burn your face off. I'm being choked and I'm grasping for air. I can feel my skin being torn at. I'm screaming, but nobody's hearing me. There's two snakes that are loose in the house. We're trapped in this room. I really can't remember when I started having this nightmare. Coming from some angle is a guy who's clearly coming at me. His only mission in life is to kill me. Dreams and nightmares, the subconscious way of sending a message. With the right tools, it is possible to decipher these symbols. I'm Lauren Lawrence, and I have these tools. I've been decoding celebrity dreams for over a decade. Nightmares expose the truth, whether you want to know it or not. This particular nightmare, I had it about a month ago, so it was, it was fairly recent. When I became pregnant for the second time, I keep having this same sort of scenario going on. There's things that are reoccurring, and I know that they must mean something. It seems to me that there's so many different factors that go into dreams. I'd like my nightmare decoded because I'm just really interested to find out and learn more about what's going on, you know, learning more about myself. So, Nicole, you're pregnant. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Pregnancy is a time when women dream incredibly wild nightmares. In general, pregnant women remember their dreams much more than non-pregnant women because the hormones are raging at that time. So tell me about this nightmare that's been bothering you. My nightmare begins in my bedroom of my home. It's really bright and sunny and light in there and really like kind of empty. And my mother is there and my daughter. <laughs> there were no men in the room. It was all women. And we're packing in cardboard boxes and they're stacked up. There was definitely a sense of urgency and rushing with the packing. Off my bedroom, there's a hallway and it's filled with cages of little like kittens and bunnies. And there's two snakes that are loose in the house. I personally am scared to death of snakes. I'm also scared to death to be out there. So I keep running back into the bedroom. But then I couldn't bear to th the thought that these poor little babies were out in the hallway. I'm in a panic between trying to protect everybody in the room, but then also trying to go outside into the hallway to protect all the little fuzzy animals. I keep going out into the hallway and trying to rearrange the, um, the crates. Kittens are jumping out of the holes in the crates, and it's like mayhem. And they just don't understand that there's these predators that are going to come and um, eat them. I think I was putting towels over some of them to cover up the holes on the cages. As soon as I see the snakes, I hightail it back to the room. I'm making sure everything is closed. The windows are closed and locked. Um, and there's a vent that goes from my, the inside of my bedroom to um, the hallway. And for some reason, I keep using like this light bucket and putting it over the vent and trying to explain to my daughter that um, not to touch it and that the snakes will come in. And the dream sort of turns into panic of how are we going to get out of the room. I remember expressing to my mom, hello, it's, we're like going to die here. And she's kind of like, oh, you know, quit worrying. I'm the only one that seems to care that there's like this predator. So I feel completely responsible since I understand what danger lies ahead. So it's this never ending cat and mouse game. So it sort of just ends before, before anything is solved. Uh, Nicole, that is a great nightmare. I love pregnancy dreams, but now I'm going to break down the dream into symbols so you can figure out 
what your dream means and how one impacts the other. I'm going to decode the symbols one by one. The symbol of the bedroom represents the emotions. It's a private space. It is your emotional world. It represents what is happening in your life. Whatever is in that room represents your emotional relationship at the time of the dream. Anyone that is in your bedroom with you is very important in your life because they're inside your room and your room represents you. The grand of the room, the grand of the sense of self, the less the room, the less the sense of self. When one is trapped, it is a clear representation of a sense of claustrophobia in one's life. There's a feeling that you cannot escape, that you're trapped in your situation. There's nothing that you can do. That could be an emotional entrapment, or it could be a, a literally a physical entrapment. Similarly, the cages that you have in your dream is yet another representation of the feeling of being trapped. The packing symbol is interesting. You want everything to be compartmentalized and everything to be in its proper place. So it's really you preparing. It's a preparatory symbol. The symbol of the vent is an interesting symbol because on the one hand, it expresses your wish to vent. So there is some kind of emotion, anger, whatever, that you really need to get off your chest. And the fact that you close off the vent or try to block it in some way means that you are cognizant of this danger and you want to keep yourself protected. The symbol of a snake is a phallic symbol. It also represents the masculine. It can represent an emotional relationship with a, with a man. And it sometimes can represent someone who does not have your best interest at heart. Nicole, this is what your nightmare means. It's a relationship dream with emotional issues. What is most interesting is the fearful element and the protective element. There's the snakes. Now, snake is a masculine symbol. And the fact that it's outside the room is interesting because it's not in your immediate life right now. And that's the threatening element of the dream. The little bunnies and sweet little animals represent babies. The fact that you're trying to save them means on some level you're trying to, of course, save your child from any kind of harm, from any kind of external harm, and also on some level you're trying to save yourself. Because in dreams, most images respond back to the dreamer. The fact that there is no man in the bedroom, that it's only women and you're fending for yourself, means that there's no father to take care of your child. If I might ask, though, without getting too personal, um, the father of your first child, uh -huh. um, is he still active in the relationship? The father of the first, my first child was active in the beginning mm -hmm. and then disappeared for many years. And same thing now. Elias Howe struggled for many years with his model of the sewing machine. He could not get the needle to thread properly. When he dreamt of being threatened by a savage tribe, he noticed that the raised spears had an elliptical hole at the top. This was the missing clue he needed, and the commercial sewing machine was born. There's a feeling that you cannot escape. You're trapped in your situation. The dream sort of turns into panic of how are we going to get out of the room. It's a relationship dream with emotional issues. If I might ask, though, without getting too personal, um, the father of your first child, uh -huh. um, is he still active in the relationship? Or? The father of the first, my first child was active in the beginning mm -hmm. and then disappeared for many years. And same thing now. Now, um, yeah, this was planned and he seemed to be part of it and then mm -hmm. um, something got too much and he took off. And so he's completely gone. Well, you see, now, if your mother is in the room and she's with you, and there is no man in the room, and she's not afraid of the snakes, 
then basically she might be representing on some level the powerful masculine figure. So it's almost like she's a substitute. Well, yeah, she's my, she's yeah. my rock in my life. So she's doing what someone else should be doing. Particularly stands out that there's two snakes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and here, when we look at it that way, we do have the dual meaning. The two s snakes, on the one hand, represent the phallus of the two different people and the two different fathering of children. And also, there is the element of the snake, meaning they're not good. The dream is, is very good because it shows going forward that um, you are in control. I've done it mm -hmm. once by myself, so I know I could do it again by myself. I just didn't want to. The dream warns you about getting involved with people that may put you in this situation again, which is why you are sealing the door to your bedroom and why you're stuck in it. I wish there were more clues of to like how to fix the problem. You're going to perhaps change a little bit of and be a little more protective of yourself. Instead of focusing on you, you're gonna focus on being the best mother you possibly sure. can and protect them. And I'm ready to do and it. And you're ready to do it. <laughs> yeah. I thought Lauren's interpretation was pretty right on. It seemed like everything she said, um, what everything represented was pretty much where I'm at in my life. It's fascinating that she can just read me like an open book from the dream interpretation. I'm really curious to see what happens with my nightmares from here on out. Are they gonna be lighter or am I gonna take all this information I just learned and, you know, dream heavier? It's kind of exciting to see where it goes. I really can't remember when I started having this kind of nightmare, but I do know that it's been for a long, long time. It's probably the only dream I remember and nothing else stays with me. I'm an actor in my dream. I'm barely escaping like some spy in Europe, like MacGyver or something. To me, it always gives me that same feeling when I wake up, cold sweat. Sometimes the bed is wet. I'm breathing hard, heart racing, and I'm scared for a few minutes. If there was a way to get rid of the reoccurring nightmare, I'd get rid of it. You never know, uh, I might develop a new nightmare. <laughs> So I'd like to hear about your recurring nightmare. So my nightmare begins with me walking down the street. It's usually an inner city neighborhood. The cars going by, lights on in houses. I'm feeling like, um, like you know, the streets are dangerous. I'm alert and I'm looking around and. and Sure enough, coming from, you know, some angle is a guy who's clearly coming at me. He's got something that he's about to hurt me with it, and he's bigger than me. His demeanor is that of the Terminator. His only mission in life is to kill me. I have no option. I turn and I run. up in an alley, you know, face to face with a barking dog. It's like drooling massively from the mouth. The dog's jumping at me. And I run from the dog, the dog runs right behind me. At some point, I go around a corner. I end up at a vehicle that magically has car keys in it. I jump in the vehicle. But the thing, nothing happens in my night. Nothing, nothing works for me. I'm helpless. I have to um, jump out the passenger door. I have to get somewhere and be safe. My mind says go indoors. And I don't know how, but I end up indoors. Trying to desperately find something. I go straight to the kitchen, look through some drawers. I see the big guy again. I miraculously end up with a gun in my hand. I point the gun, the gun clicks. 
but nobody gets shot. And I'm, I'm seconds away from, you know, doomsday. My only option is this window. I dive out the window, I climb down a fire escape, I run up the street, tripping on curbs, falling. All of a sudden, it's not just one person, it's the whole neighborhood is, is after me now. There's no more doors to run through, no fences to jump, and these people are, it's like a mob, and they're coming full speed at me. I find myself surrounded, and I wake up every time. Let me tell you something about a recurring nightmare. It recurs because you don't get it. Your mind is trying to tell you something. Dreams and nightmares deal in conflict resolution. So once you understand the meaning of the dream, it should go away and you will not be plagued by this. Now I'm going to go through the symbols of your dream one by one. I'm going to decode them and let you know well, what they mean and their relevance to the entire dream. The symbol of being chased is very interesting because, of course, you're running from something and it's behind you, it means it's the past. A growling dog is a symbol of anger. It's also a symbol of the more bestial emotions and the inner demons that we have. When you are trying to shoot a gun and there are no bullets in it or the trigger doesn't work, it's a sign of ineffectiveness, powerlessness in life. A window is a symbol of the soul. If it's an open window, it expresses the desire to know yourself. If it's a closed window, it means that you're repressing a lot of information. People that are born blind experience a heightened sense of taste, touch, and smell while dreaming. And those who become sightless as young children may continue to see visual images in their dreams so these images do tend to fade over time. It's a sign of ineffectiveness, powerlessness. All of a sudden, it's not just one person, it's the whole neighborhood is, is after me now. It means that you're repressing a lot of information. So, are you ready for the meaning of your nightmare? Yes, what's, what's the meaning? So your dream is a bit of a warning dream. You are and can be your own worst enemy. You are fighting yourself. You're at odds with yourself. I knew it within myself, but right. I didn't know that I was even thinking it unconsciously, unconsciously, you know? When you said that there was a man who was coming towards you, who was dangerous, and you said he was like the Terminator, that is really the wish for self-confrontation. The gun which does not have bullets, the car, so you can't start it. All of those would normally represent powerlessness, but not in your case. The reason you can't shoot the man is because you're the man. You don't want to shoot yourself. And the reason you don't leave with the car is because you want this confrontation with yourself. When you are surrounded at the end, and that's the wish for confrontation, the fact that you are encircled means that you are of central importance. Probably like the most important issue in my life between me and myself, my, you know, my career, where I kind of make these songs that are, have like a lot of explicit words. It's because some people perceive it to be very negative, mm -hmm. and I don't live a very negative lifestyle. That's what the dream is telling you but then it's my job. <laughs> I, gotta, <laughs> I gotta do my job. Yeah, but you're aware of it. So I need to find that balance. Yes, yes. I think my, my main issue with myself mm -hmm. is not actually having a family foundation. Like, I did not stop in my career. In the last 10 years or so, it's on, the, on my brain constantly that, is it too late? Should I have done it, you know? and. It's a void. I feel like I missed the train, you know?
When in the dream, the running around, again, is also running from certain things, so you're not really ready to commit. So I need to get married and have some kids right yeah. away? The dream will definitely stop then. <laughs> the craziest part to me is that uh, she could analyze my subconscious mind and actually come up with thoughts that I have every day. Never in a million years would have came up with any of that. And then to, to just realize that, that that's really what, I, <laughs> what I've been thinking all along. And it's, you know, I guess it is a, something I really need to consider. I'm at a, at a time in my life right now where I, I really need to think about what just happened today. I had this nightmare just a week ago. I believe that this nightmare stayed with me because it's something that's unfinished in my life. I keep wanting to go back to it. It's public knowledge that I was sexually abused as a child. With sexual abuse comes a strong sense of no self-worth. The reason I would like to find out once and for all is because I'm not sure where it's stemming from. I really want to have some, some closure. So, Danielle, why don't you tell me about the nightmare that's been troubling you? Walk me through it. My nightmare begins like any other night. I'm walking through these fields of green. It seems like the grass is getting taller and taller. There was a slight breeze, but I remember running my hands alongside of them and almost have to bend it to, to walk through it. And what amazed me the most is the color of these flowers were so purple and really made me feel safe. And as the grass is parting as I'm walking through it and I'm coming to the end of this cliff, I just sort of want to peek over and look and see what is beneath there. It was almost as if I was defying gravity at one point. I see myself at a 45 degree angle. As I begin to look down, I can feel I'm very scared. I'm, I'm feeling like a lot of anxiety. I can hear there's water. I lean forward and my feet just sort of let go. And I begin to fall. I'm trying to grab onto what I think is the blades of these, this grass just willowing over the side of the cliff. But it's not, it's this rope, and the rope is thick enough for me to hold on to. I'm trying to climb by using the rope. But I'm hearing now is blood curling screams from my children. I begin to dive towards my children's voices. I'm seeing this projector in the side of the cliff of my face being choked. I can hear my children's screams. I can see my face in desperation for help and trying to release someone's hands from my neck. It's just hands of men just tearing at me. I can feel my skin being torn at. I am being tortured. I'm hearing my children's voices. And I sort of land. It was kind of muddy. Something was sticking to me. When I open my eyes, I'm in a field of grass with my children, running around with these complete strangers who I don't recognize their voices. I'm screaming, but nobody's hearing me. It's almost like I'm not there, and I'm pulling behind me blades of grass as I'm lying in it, and just pulling and tugging at them, but I couldn't remove myself from the grass. It felt like I was being held back by the force of nature. The way I woke up is I was falling off the side of my bed, and I was literally holding on to, you know, my bed sheets as if it was that rope off the side of that cliff. A very scary thing to wake up to. This is interesting. The worse the nightmare, the better the nightmare because it means that you're working through something that's bothering you. First symbol, 
The cliff is a, it's a definite symbol of being on the edge in your life. When you dream this, there's a period in your life where you felt on edge, and that's what you're coming back to in this dream. The image of looking down. Down represents the unconscious. It also represents melancholia, depression, negativity. When you look up, it's happy. Falling represents control issues. There's the wish to let go. It typically happens in the very beginning of the dream because it's a physiological condition or connection that you are making with losing consciousness. The image of being choked is a symbol of suffocation. Something traumatic has happened in your life that you are recalling in your dream, and your dream is trying to distill it. That smacks of abuse. There is a sense of being ripped apart. It refers to the sense of soul. The image of the tall grass, particularly what was so interesting was you lying behind the tall grass. It's almost as if on some level you want to be hidden or it's revealing that something is hidden from you. Danielle, are you absolutely ready to hear the meaning of your nightmare? Because these things are sometimes uncomfortable and stressful. I am more than ready. Your nightmare is a rescue fantasy that reveals emotional issues and the need for you to be protected and saved. When you are pulling at the grass, you are grasping for your roots. This dream is all about the past. There is identity issues that you have to deal with. Danielle, are you adopted? Dreaming that you're barefoot can have different meanings depending on your environment. If you dreamt that you're walking down a city sidewalk barefoot, it might mean you're feeling ill-prepared for the task at hand. Walking barefoot through the woods, however, reveals a sense of connectedness with the earth and indicates the need to act on your natural instincts. It's almost as if on some level you want to be hidden. I'm pulling behind me blades of grass. I can see my face in desperation for help. Danielle, are you adopted? I was. It's very important for you to know your true roots. When you're leaning over the cliff, it represents indecisiveness. You might want to just stay there a little bit, but you're pushing yourself because you want to get to the bottom of this. As you're falling over, you hear the voices of children. Yes. And they're very young in this, this nightmare. What was happening to you? In my own life, I was being severely abused. I was abused by family members. That's the worst kind of abuse. According to what you just said, represent a crucial age in your own life. Mm -hmm. It shows the trauma that you went through. And wanting to dive into that place represents the unconscious. All the little scenes that you saw projected on the side of the cliff refer to the abuse event. The next image of being torn at, almost like you're being poured, like by an animal, again, that smacks of abuse. It represents soul murder. Have you ever heard that? No. It strips you of your own sense of individuality. The falling image shows um, that there are control issues, but you're gonna let go and see where that leads you, which is very strong on your part. It could also represent some sense that you are fallen from grace. Often people that are abused, particularly by a paternal image, you feel a sense of betrayal. I'm almost at that crossroads, I think, in my life where it's time. I mean, I'm 48 years old, and it's difficult to explain to people who haven't been through what I've been through, but yeah, yeah it takes a lot of strength. Of course, I understand. Not being heard is a very key symbol. That's a sense of nullification, it's that no one is listening to you because you're not really there. Something has been taken from you. When you see your children playing and they're having fun, 
uh, in the field and you so want to share in that but you can't, that's, that totally goes back to the abuse end because on some level it shows that you sense that you are different from the children that are leading a carefree life. And even though you'd like to go back into that with them, you feel you can't. Yes. There are moments that I won't allow myself to enjoy just the simplest pleasure. Yes, because on some level you're punishing yourself. That all has to do with the sense of knowing who you are and your identity at this point in time. And I think when you focus on that, you can move forward in your life. Well, now I gotta begin to do yes, that. Because you have to think highly of yourself and just focus more on who you are. And I think that's a great possibility. I think it's time for me to find my roots then. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So I am going to take all of her advice and really run with it and try to reclaim my life from my own and not let those who took my soul from me so many years ago, decades ago, interfere with my future. I'm not gonna continue blaming myself. Hopefully I'll be able to walk out the door with my head held high. Instead of looking down, I'll just keep looking up. Uh, my nightmare was a recurring nightmare and it happened somewhere between five or six years old. They stuck with me my whole life. I got into the entertainment industry at the age of eight, so actually this dream happened years before I even got involved in my profession. It would never really stop until uh, before my teens. When I was five or six, it would happen almost nightly. It became a situation where going to bed was stressful. It was the only dream that kept coming back again and again and again, and it was so traumatic. I'd like to know if there's any information I can glean from it. So Dustin, I really want to hear about this recurring nightmare that you've had. My nightmare begins uh, the same way every time. I'm suddenly thrust into a tavern. Well, there's no people around. It's lit, I'm assuming by candlelight. Lanterns hanging from the ceiling. Old style wood tables. And uh, behind me, there's a door but it doesn't open. It looked like a door, it had the handle and the metal brackets on the top and bottom, but there was no seam. I'd pull on the handle and this thing wouldn't move, it wouldn't budge. It's very hot in the room. It's a very uncomfortable feeling. The only other person besides me makes his appearance. I'd turn around and he'd be there. He's just like a big, fat, sweaty butcher and he had hair all over his arms and shoulders and just wearing a, uh, an apron that's covered in blood. His face is like a putty. It was like the eyes were sunken in. There was a bump for the nose, kind of ridges that would suggest where the mouth would be. It looked like his face had been melted. A few seconds of face to face, he would lift his blowtorch and say, I'm gonna burn your face off. There was no real place to hide. I'd always uh, leap over the first table and then kind of run around the second table. He would always start coming towards the side that I went to, which is always towards the wall. And then I would dart across, cutting the next corner, and I kept that pattern up. The only sound you had was your own breathing and the sound of the blowtorch. He would only uh, taunt me if I broke line of sight. Where are you? You can't run forever. He would keep it burning as he would chase me. I would try to hide. The tables are all wooden, so you could kind of see through them. I had my hands on the seats, kind of looking, going, OK, where is he coming from? The second I would see his legs, I would start to get ready to move. It's like he's, he's always right behind you. I couldn't count on hiding under the table, because where can I go? I can't keep this up forever. I'm not making any progress. There was no way to get to the outside world. It was like any night could be the last chase. Wow. 
That is a scary nightmare. Indeed. It's got a lot of violent symbolism. It is interesting, though, that you dreamt it when you were a child because 40% of childhood dreams are often nightmares. Why do our dreams often feature the everyday sounds that surround us? Dream incorporation is a phenomenon where actual sensations such as environmental sounds are incorporated into the dream. This occurs because it is in our nature to preserve sleep. It was the only dream that kept coming back again and again and again, and it was so traumatic. I'm suddenly thrust into a tavern. The only other person besides me makes his appearance. He's just like a big, fat, sweaty butcher. A few seconds of face-to-face. He would lift his blowtorch and say, It's going to burn your face off. Wow. <laughs> that is a scary nightmare. It's got a lot of violent symbolism. The first symbol is the big, burly butcher. It's someone who you're frightened of because he's big and he's powerful. The fact that the butcher is bald represents loss. Hair is a power symbol, would reveal the wish to make this person less powerful. The featureless missing face reveals that this is someone you do not want to recognize in your life. You don't want to recognize what is in your own deepest heart, your own fears and desires. The fact that he has no mouth is a similar symbol because you don't want to give voice to what you are feeling. The windowless tavern, any place that has no windows, means that there's no way for you to look out. You don't want to know and you don't want anyone else to know. Might also represent a womb symbol. While the door that doesn't open over your left shoulder, in a dream left, represents past, and the fact that it doesn't open means that you don't want to leave. Dustin, are you ready to hear yes. the meaning of this dream? Yes. This is a very, very common nightmare had by young boys who spend more time with their mommies than their daddies. It's an edible dream, and that's why you don't have them anymore, because you have matured. There is this unconscious jealousy of the father. There is this natural fear and competitiveness that the father will try to do you in in some way, will try to hurt you. And the fact that he could talk in the dream, but he had no mouth. It really means that it's something you do not want to give voice to. In other words, the face off, literally, it means you want to face off with him. So Is that common for, I mean, because dads often raise their sons to be like them. Absolutely. And kids want to be their own voice. That's and... why it's so secret in the tavern. That's why he wants to come after you, because you really want what he has. You're chasing, he's running after you, and you're outsmarting him. That's the wish of the dream. Anyone who would come between you and the relationship of your mother as a threat, which is why the father is perceived in this dream as the threatening butcher who wants to hurt you. The windowless tavern, on some level, associated with your mother, which is why you don't leave. You run around, avoiding your father, but you still stay, and there is no door for you to leave. Even though you have this frightening butcher coming at you, you still want to stay close to the tavern. If you wanted to leave, you would have written in a door for yourself. Right. Dreams are a very creative process. You are the director the screenwriter, the actor, sometimes playing all the parts. So when he wants to kill you, it's basically you want to kill him. Right. Horrifically creative. <laughs> Horrific, but, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, typical of these dreams are violent symbolism. That's one of the keys of these dreams. So does that make sense to you? Well, yeah. In my family, the my dad was the one, the spanker. We didn't have time out. So, uh, yeah. you know, it, was, it definitely makes sense that mom was the safety net. Mm -hmm and dad was the more authoritative punisher. Yes, and you spent more time with your mom? 
Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's probably because I got in trouble a lot as a kid. <laughs> Try and avoid the spankings. And if I ran to mom, I'd be safe. So that's why, on some level, there's no door because you want to stay with the mother in the tavern. Right. In other words, you want to. Your battle is between you and your father. You want to keep her out of it. You don't want him to see her. I wish it had been running from from dad wanting to spank me instead of a butcher trying to burn my face off. <laughs> The, the burning of the face off is, is um, also your wish that he doesn't see you. That's why he doesn't have a face. So you don't even want to be seen thinking this, dreaming this. Can't really recognize him, and you don't want him to recognize you. Right. If you probably asked some of your friends, they'd probably remember something like this. Sometimes they have dreams with spiders and whatever, but it's always the same thing. Well, I, I guess uh, if I have kids, so someday I'll be the butcher. <laughs> you might be. That sucks. <laughs> uh, it made made much more sense, and all 34 years I've been carrying around this this memory of this recurring nightmare, and didn't know what it meant. It's interesting to me that to find out that everything breaks down into simple a simple storyline that a, you know may reflect directly what's going on in your life at that moment. You know, to me it was always just a scary butcher in a bar. You know, didn't know didn't know what else to do but run. But now, you know, I have a, a different way to look at it. I'm relieved to find out that it was normal, that I wasn't just a, a messed up kid that turned out to be something quite natural and common for, for boys to go through and occurred at the right time period. And, you know, I was closer to my mom than my dad. So it makes more sense now. It makes me feel a lot better.